If you need to write lots of questions for Moodle, the very quickest way to do so is into a text file format called GIFT format. GIFT is great because it's very quick to develop lots and lots of questions, but it's quite difficult to read and write, particularly if you're new to it. So there's some complexity here, um, and that complexity grows as you get more complex with the questions that you're trying to write. So in order to simplify things, I've written a little program into my preferred editor, which is Sublime Text. I'm going to show you Sublime Text now. Here it is here. I've created a modified or simplified version of GIFT and then a piece of uh, software that runs within Sublime Text to convert that into a proper GIFT output ready for Moodle. But before we can get to that, let's first install the um, Sublime Text plugin. With this recording, I'll provide you with a link. That link is to a zip file. And when you download and unzip that, you'll end up with these sets of files. One of these is a sample GIFT file, and it gives you kind of the basic instructions and anatomy of how to create your own GIFT files. Importantly, however, there is this folder. This folder contains the plugin that we'll need to add to our Sublime Text. OK, so I'm going to go back into Sublime Text. I'm going up to the Sublime Text menu, down to Preferences, and then to Browse Packages. And this is the folders that store all of the, effectively, the plugins or add-ons to uh, Sublime Text. So I'm going to now copy this folder and all of its contents and paste it into the Packages folder. I'm doing this on a Mac. Of course, you can repeat these same steps on a Windows machine. You should notice then that this process gift folder is in here, along with all the other folders that might be present in your Sublime Text. OK, so now that we've installed the plugin, we're pretty much ready to start. I'm going to relaunch my uh, Sublime Text just to make sure that that plugin has been properly deployed. So I'm going to quit it and then relaunch it. And here we are ready to go. So I've prepared a file ahead of time using this simplified version of GIFT. It's much easier to read now than a true GIF file is. Uh, the first question you'll notice here, we've got the body statement, of course, that's the question that students will see. And then there's some curly braces and the answer is within them. This first question is a true false question and all you need to simply do is put F or T in the braces when you're dealing with true false. But I know we tend not to use those. So let's look to some other question types. This question here is a multiple choice question. It has three possible answers, and the correct answer is shown with the equal sign. So that's fairly straightforward. This is a more interesting question. It's a question I favor a lot, and it is a multiple response. So it's a variant of multiple choice. But in this case, there are four correct answers, each of which indicated with an equal sign. And then in this case, three incorrect answers. So you can see to write these will be really quite quick. You write the question in stub, you open your curly braces and you put in your alternatives. Any alternative that happens to be correct, you simply put an equal sign in front of it. So the authoring of these questions could be really, really rapid using this process. And then here is a matching question type. You'll notice here that to assign the match, you simply put the term, an equal sign and its definition. And finally, we have a long response or paragraph type of question. It recall that paragraph questions can't be marked by a computer. They'll need to be marked manually. But if you're intending to write these questions, all you simply need to do is open and close curly braces and put nothing inside. So that's it. We've authored five questions really very quickly. We need to get this in a format that we can upload into Moodle. I'm going to save my changes. And now I'm going to run this uh, extra plugin that I've written for this purpose. It's available to you under the Tools menu, and it's this one here, Process GIF File. So if I run that now, you'll notice a few things have happened. You'll notice, first of all, that it's gone through and it's auto-named each question. So GIF has this curious convention for when it names its questions. It opens two columns, puts the name of the question between them, and then closes two columns. And in this case, you'll notice that it's named them sequentially question 01, question 02, question 03. That's just one less thing that you need to think about as you're writing your questions. 
What it's also done is it's gone through and rewritten elements of some of these questions. So for instance, in this multiple choice question, it still identifies the correct answer, but with gift files, incorrect answers are started with this tilde symbol. So it's basically just process that ready to be uploaded. And here's, I think, where the most important element kicks in. This is a tricky piece of work. It's when you've got multiple response questions, in Moodle, you need to identify what proportion of marks you give to each response. And that's where things get very, very slow when you're doing this in the editor. The plugin has done this for you. It's worked out in this instance that there were four correct responses. Therefore, it's a portion 25% to each of those four correct answers. There were three incorrect answers. And so it's a portion negative 33 and a third marks each of those incorrect. The rationale behind this, by the way, is that if a student was to simply go down and tick every answer, this sums out to zero. So they can't gain the system. They, this will, in essence, standardise things out. So if they try and cheat, they get zero. And then when the matching questions appear, it's reformatted those in the way that GIFT expects them, with a equals at the front and a kind of an arrow in the middle. But again, the way that we wrote it initially means that we can do this really rapidly, not have to think about it too hard. And then the plugin does the heavy lifting of converting it into a upload ready file format. I'm gonna undo these changes quickly and make another change. Imagine we also want to put our questions into categories. We can do that in GIFT as well. All we need to do is specify dollar category. And by the way, if you don't remember this, it's in that sample file that I gave you. And then the names of the category. So I tend to use the name of the unit of competency. Now I've put a category in. I'm going to run the exact same process and we'll see how the results are different. So I'm going to go up to tools, run the process GIF file. Now in the naming of the question, it includes both the category name and the question numbering. The rationale here is that when we get this into Moodle, we can identify any question and its purpose by looking to the question name. Let's extend this one more time. I'm going to undo again. And now I'm going to put some subtopics to this. Maybe these first questions are in topic one. I'm just going to copy this down lower on. And perhaps from this point on, they're in topic two. And I'm going to run the little plug in one last time. So now in the naming of the questions, we've got both the primary category and its subcategory, including to the name, but also note the numbering. Here's topic one, question one, two, three. As we get down to topic two, it now reads topic two, question one, topic two, question two. So it restarts the numbering for each topic and subtopic. Behind the scenes, what has also happened is it saved a number of different versions of this file. So if we turn our attention to the file system quickly, and I go into the appropriate folder, you'll notice that there's actually three versions of this. There's the original file, a backup of that file, just in case you've got, need to go back to an earlier version, and the output as underscore gift. So this is a file that you can just now upload directly into Moodle as your finished file. Let me step you through that. If I return to my browser and back into Moodle, I can upload this GIFT file and all the questions contained within it by going to the COG menu, going down to Question Bank, opening that up and choosing the Import option. From here, I choose GIFT Format. And I'm going to simply drag and drop the file, remember the underscore GIFT file that was created for me, Place that into there and hit the import button. It's giving you a message to say I've created five questions, which is excellent. It gives me a summary of those five questions. And if I hit the continue button, I can notice now that I've got some brand new categories. Here they are here. Within those categories, there are some subcategories with a number of questions in each subcategory. And if I choose, for instance, this parent category, I can see each one of my questions. If I sort by name, for instance, if we hit the question here, 
you can see that there are three questions to topic one and two to topic two. The naming convention identifies very specifically the purpose of each question. So if these questions happen to get misplaced or put into the wrong categories, it's very clear and obvious from its title about what its purpose and location should be. And you'll notice also that the question logos here identify what type of question. There was a true false, a multiple choice, another multiple choice, a matching and a paragraph. And of course, we can preview any of those. So for instance, if I was to preview this question here, which is our multiple response question, and I'll just move that up on the screen, you'll notice that uh, it's got the question here. And an important observation at this point is that when we're writing our questions, we didn't take a lot of time to, to sort of randomize them in the writing process. There's no need, Moodle randomizes them for us. So you'll see that this is the question, there are four correct answers and it happens to be that they're kind of all a bit mixed up. So that's it. Of course, the next step would be to, to put those questions into a quiz itself. I won't bother with that in this recording. I think you know how to do that pretty comfortably by now. Uh, but really that writing process is the critical piece. And so hopefully that extension makes things much easier for you.